share with you some verses. And then from there is then we can see what we can do. Can we open the book of Psalms? Uh, maybe we read 7. Chapter 7. From verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Yes. O oh Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me. Lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces, while there is none to deliver. O oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me, or have plundered my enemy without cause, let the enemy pursue me and overtake me. Yes, let him trample my life to the earth and lay my honor to the dust. Just read verse 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want us to look at this verse. Can I, verse I was trying to ask myself if we understand what is grace. I found that most of the time we are saying grace has appeared. Grace has appeared. Sometimes, if you talk about grace, now we can understand what grace is doing for you. You can end up not understanding that grace. You must reach a level where you understand what is it that grace has done on you. So I want us to look at this verse. Uh, verse 17. Verse 17. When you reach that level, you'll be able to thank God. Here you can hear David say, I thank you, God. But look here, he said, we had persecutors. But he prayed this prayer and say, if these persecutors are supposed to carry on persecuting us, will be right if I have done one, two, three. So actually, if you are if you are a shumar, 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 if Today, I felt we need to learn about a prayer of thanksgiving. Because it brings a meaning of grace to our lives. Tell your neighbor, a prayer of thanksgiving brings a meaning of grace to our lives. Just write a prayer of thanksgiving. When I was Listening, Mama, uh, reading here. She read, "If I ah. might have done this, God, let my enemy do one, two, three." You just read verse three. Oh Lord, my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me. Stop there. David say, my persecutors can overcome me. If I have done wrong to someone I'm not supposed to have done wrong. Read it again, verse 3. Oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me, or have plundered my enemy without cause. 
If I fought my enemy without cause, O oh Lord, let these persecutors carry on doing what they are doing. Anna ke kwishishele na bala ka botoko o se nna re sebiletswa a ba tswele pele mana ba ba dia ka mogo ba dia. Look at verse 17. Mara verse 17 yona. Just read that verse 17 again. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. Yes. I will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Here they will say, I have prayed that prayer because I know myself. You need to reach a level where you know yourself. You cannot pray that prayer unless your hands are clean. Let my enemy carry on. Doing what doing. If I have done wrong to them. But here the Bible says, he say, I praise you, God. In other words, he was giving thanksgiving. He knew his hands were clean. And he understood what will happen. A prayer of thanksgiving, you cannot give it when your hands are not clean. Unless you know you are clean. You can still pray like David. And say, my enemy can carry on doing that if I've done what to pray. I don't know if you are hearing me. So thanksgiving prayer does not need sinners. It needs people who know that their hands are clean. I was reading Colossians 4 verse 2. Where the Bible says, be, be persistent. And devoted to prayer. And be alert and focused. In your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. In other words, we cannot pray unless we have got attitude of thanksgiving. If we are not focused, if we are not alert, it's possible we pray a wrong prayer. But when we are alert and focused, we'll be able to understand why we pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Here it shows that a prayer of thanksgiving it's a prayer of hope it's a prayer of faith my attitude won't be affected the way I'll be alerted will be different because I understand what will happen you know the moment how you kneel down to pray already the, the, the situation you are portraying judges you before you even ask the statement. The moment you just say, I want to pray, the portrayal you do, the action you are committing, shows you understand who you are. It also brings judgment on you. Whether your attitude is right or you, you have, have been, been alerted. alerted. If not, you will pray a wrong prayer. That is why many people pray, pray, and they don't see results. That is why there is no prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is a prayer of thanksgiving. Tell a prayer of faith is a prayer of thanksgiving. 
The moment I say, thank you, Lord. It means I'm saying it is done. You cannot say thank you, Lord, unless you know. Unless you know something. But the moment you say, thank you, Lord. It means you are saying, God has done something. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Just read that verse. We normally read it. It says what? In everything we give thanks. Uh, it says that. Just read that aloud in your Bible. It says what? In verse 1. I want to tell you why the Bible says in everything we give thanks because it is the will of God. It shows that thanksgiving is a part of the prayer. Changes your prayer to make everything to be on the plan of God. When you want to say thank you, Lord, when you, pray, you change everything you see. And you bring everything to be the plan of God. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are so say, Lord, this is your plan. Have you ever read about the plan of Israelites that God gave to them? But the time of Jeremiah. If you read Jeremiah 29, just go there. If you read from 10 to 14, you find there were prophets who were prophesying. That you are not home. That God is taking you back. But you know, Jeremiah stood up with the plan of God. He said, Listen, the plan of God is we want to give you future and hope. You are not here to die. You must thank God. Because when you thank God, you change the pain to be a part of the plan of God. Can you tell me about when you, when you thank God, you change your situation to be part of the plan of God. And the plan of God is to give you future and and hope. It's not to kill you. Somebody can still face what you are facing but and he dies. He but you can survive. Because there's a plan of God upon you. I don't you know if you are here So when you start to say, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. In your situation. You are changing the situation to be the part of plan of God. It means that situation will work for the best. Remember Romans 8 verse 28. That talks about everything works for God. So the situation will tend to be good. I don't know if you are hearing this. That's what I say my friend. What are you facing? You are lacking only one thing. To thank God about what you are going through. It will be changed to be the plan of God. You know, the plan of God comes in a different way. Sometimes when God wants you to face what you are facing, sometimes He leaves you alone so that you believe in Him alone. I was looking at the plan of God in the life of Abraham. When Abraham tried all, even what his father was worshipping, could not bring him to a point where he have a child. But because God loved him, he delayed him until Abraham complained. When God said, 
I'm your shield. Mo de mare nna ke nna se phema sa gao. Abraham say what are you protecting? Abraham are o sireletsa eng wena modimo. I go alone without a shield. Ke sipela ke le tii ke se nna le ngwana. Even this one who's following me. Le yena ya ntsheteng ka morao. It's not even my child he will take whatever I have. Ase wa ka maro tata tjia di ntotse ile ntsha. That's where God began to speak. Ke mo modimo a thumile ngona ane mo bolela. I've got a plan for you. Arao wa ke na le plan mo go wena. Whatever you are going through. Ka mo ka tshe go pena le tsona. Family. So that I bless you so Can you tell someone say, hey, what you are going through is the plan of God. And if it's the plan of God, and you must give thanks. When you give thanks, you are changing the situation to be part of the plan of God. I don't know if you are hearing I that. that. Okay, just look at this Philippians 4 verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6. In fact, there you could see that the prayer of thanksgiving to pray for things specifically. You know, it just helps us to have understanding of what we are praying. Because the moment when you say, thank you Lord, it means you are aware. Why you are praying that prayer. I don't know if you are hearing that. So the prayer of thanksgiving teaches you to pray things specifically. You are, you are able to identify and thank God. You, you won't go wrong. You know the reason why you are thanking him. You understand why you are thanking him. That is maturity. When you become mature, you know why you are praying the prayer. And you understand what will become. So you can just pray specifically and thank God not knowing what will happen. The moment you say, I thank you, Lord. You, you, knowing specifically what you are praying for. You have declared that thing that there is an answer on it. I don't know if you are hearing me. Amen. We need to reach a level where we pray specifically. Listen. Sometimes when we have got challenges, those challenges teaches us to, I mean, not to stand in one place. You pray for business, you pray for a job. You cannot be specific. I mean, also your faith waver. I don't know if you're hearing that. So now, a prayer of thanksgiving teaches us to be matured. We know what we need. Even when somebody can offer what is wrong, we will deny. Even if something looks back better and decorated and it's not the one we want, we will deny. So a prayer of thanksgiving takes us to where specifically God wants us to be. Think about when you reach a level where when you pray now. You don't pray like others. You know why you are praying. I just know one man called Jesus. When he prayed the prayer specifically, when he was outside Lazarus too, he said, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. I know you have heard me. But I'm just praying this prayer. You know why he said that? He said, roll the stone. He said, roll the stone. When they say, no, he's smelly. 
He was already prayed that prayer. That's what the Bible says. That's what Bible says. Now he was praying for them to hear. The Bible says he prayed it again and he said, I pray for them. He might have prayed this prayer before he moved out away from where he was. I know specifically when I'm moving to the place, there will be results. I don't know if you're hearing that. Jesus knew what will happen. And he said, thank you, Lord. But when he reached Lazarus, school, he says, I'm praying now this prayer that I've prayed today because of the hearers so that they know that the prayer of thanksgiving changes the situation. There are some people who are listening to me here. I don't know what you are facing. Don't change the prayer. Carry on praying that prayer. No matter what devil is doing in your life, carry on until you see the reason. Jesus said, I'm praying this prayer because of the hearers but I've been praying this prayer. What is it that Jesus might have prayed when they came and say Lazarus is sick God told him he will die and God told him stay there. Jesus might have said thank you Lord. Stay there thank you Lord. Delay thank you Lord. Take two days thank you Lord. Now rise up and go. Thank you, Lord. We must reach a level where we thank God for everything. When we do that, we are asking God to speak the more. I don't know if you are hearing me. One of the challenges that makes the voice of God to fail is when we are failing to thank God for the present situation. But if we want God to continue speaking, thank God for what you are facing. He will speak and tell you the reason why you are seeing what you are seeing. If you are hearing me, say, I hear. One of our challenges when the situation strikes we go for fasting to change the situation. We don't say thank you Lord for this situation. Thank you Lord for this situation. What I was trying to tell you initially in the beginning when I said thanksgiving makes us to be aware of the grace. Somebody asked me and said, look what you are facing. I mean, children you groomed up, they are standing against you. And I say, this is grace for me. Why? What is grace? It means the worst was supposed to have happened. So what I normally do, so thank you Lord. It's as good as what? You have got a child. You, are, you, you groom up the child. The child began to cook for you. Later you realize the child is close to your enemy. You realize later that oh, it was the grace of God for you for this child to be exposed. If not, he will just ask God why you were supposed to be saying thank you Lord because this is a grace for me for this child to be exposed. I was supposed to have eaten poison. I was supposed to be killed somewhere. I, I don't know if you are hearing me. You must thank God about what you are facing. I don't know if you are hearing me. As I was saying, are you thanking God about your situation? And what is your brother saying about your situation? If you groom a child, the child grew up. If you could show one, I want to the child join your enemy. Come around one moon and one, I join Alina. What are you saying? What are you saying? Automatically, I say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because 
If this child was not exposed, <laughs> that is <laughs> And you are not seeing it. That's what the Bible says. They must manifest and leave you. I don't know if you are hearing that. So you must thank God. Tell me, I want to thank God about my situation. And you say, if they have been with us, they were supposed to have continued. Have you ever read the Bible? Have you ever read the Bible? That is grace for you. So thank God, that is grace for you. The rejection, the pain, the divorce, the sickness, whatever you are facing, isolation, it is powerful for you. You must learn to thank God about it. It makes you stronger. It brings your being to be visible. And God of mercy will never leave you. I don't know if you are hearing me. I want to thank God in all my situations. So this, you know, I'm teaching you that sometimes stop doing unnecessary fasting. Because many of you, you already discouraged on those fastings. You, you go for 40 days, 40 nights. After that, you are still blind. You can't see. You ask yourself, what is happening? It was a necessary one. You are supposed to th say, I thank God I'm blind. You must thank God you can't see. Sometimes God can leave you in the dark because if he shows you what you want to see, it will kill yourself. So you must thank God that the way you are is what God wants you to be. Can, can you shake something? I want to thank God that my situation is I, I'm happy about it. And I'm accepting it. Let me show you when you want God to speak. Do what this man did. In 1 Kings chapter 3. Let's start from verse 3. If we read from 3 to 10. Ask your neighbor, are you thanking God that you are still blind, you can't see. Ask your, ask your neighbor. Do you thank God that the way you are, you don't want to change it? And you want to accept everything the way it is. Alright, read verse 3, Mama. Chapter 3, verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statues of his father David except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by the night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued his great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Now, O oh God, my O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge these great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. 
You know, here I just want to talk a few words. What is it that you do? King is so sidiang. You have seen God doing something on Kamara o robone modimo di asesing. Thanksgiving. O levo. When this young man God placed him in the position of his father. He sacrificed. And he had a prayer. Lord, I thank you that you put me in this position. But still, he was still having a challenge. I don't know if you are hearing me. Let's take he didn't sacrifice. You will be in that position with a challenge. The Bible says after he sacrificed and say, Lord, I'm sacrificing because you put me in a position. But the Lord came there and said, Ask anything. That's why he began to say, Thank you, Lord, for putting him in the position. But I'm still a young man. I mean, give me wisdom. Let me have wisdom because I'm among this nation. Sometimes, after God has done something, you know, the position we receive becomes a challenge tomorrow. Let me say it again. After God has blessed you, sometimes a blessing becomes a curse tomorrow. What we need to do, we need to learn to give thanksgiving. And we also bring sacrifice. I don't know if you're hearing me. After God gives you a job, what do you do? You do? Oh, you come and give a testimony. And it's over. You must have time of sacrifice. Because in that job, you still need God. I don't know if you're hearing me. Many times, we are satisfied where we are. After God has done something. And we forget that where we are going. There might be danger that than where we were. But when we sacrifice, God comes and speaks with us about how are we going to behave where we are going. Are we going to behave where we are going? I don't know if you are hearing me. So, Thanksgiving, we must go ahead and with sacrifice. We are not going to sacrifice. Tell them about Thanksgiving, we must go hand in hand with sacrifice. You must be able to reach God and bless Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I don't want to talk more about tithe and offer. I'm talking about sacrifice. A realization of understanding that God has done something and you need it. It's sacrifice. Realization that brings a meaning of understanding that God has done something. And on that thing that he did it, you need him. That is sacrifice. Sacrifice is needed there. If not, you will fail there. I don't know if you are hearing me. You can be given blessing and you lose all of them. You can reach a level where you think no one can put you down. But because you have never done thanksgiving and sacrifice that God put you there, you won't have any wisdom. You'll be surprised when you fall down. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are some people who are listening to me from today. From today God, is from today. God is taking you somewhere. I said, God is taking you somewhere. If you read Psalm 50, 14 to 15, 
He says, offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And pay your vow to the Most High God. When you call on the day of trouble, He said, I will rescue you. Can you see? Thanksgiving, sacrifices, you, when, when you do that, how did I say? You fulfill your vows. There will be a day of trouble. When you call, you say, I will rescue you. I don't know if you are hearing that. Look here. You are here now. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. There is a times of trouble. Your presence determines your future. What you are doing here determines your tomorrow. If you offer sacrifices and thanksgiving now, when you call tomorrow at the time of trouble, the law will hear and rescue. God looks unto our hearts. Our behaviors after we are blessed matters a lot before God. We need to learn to thank Him. You must learn to thank Him. If you learn to thank Him, you will move forward. If you learn to give thanks all the time, you will reach your destiny. There are some people who are just facing trouble here. This is your message. Stop worrying about what you're facing. Do a fasting of thanksgiving. I don't know if you're hearing me. Do a fasting of thanksgiving where you are just thanking him and you don't have any petition. You are not telling him you want bread. You are not telling him you want a job. I don't know if you are hearing me. The Lord of mercy will see you through. Let's read this verse we close. Maybe if we can read this one, it will help us. In Mark 6, verse 41, Mark 6, 41. you will find a prayer of thanksgiving that Jesus offered brings multiplication. Jesus just took the bread and thank God. It multiplies. I was telling Mama one day. I think it's yesterday. I was telling Mama this. I was with Mama. I never moved out from home. I said, Mama. Do you remember the first chest we bought of Charis? We were using batches. And those batches, I had coaches that I bought. I destroyed them and make batches. And we found that we don't have coaches now. We need to sit on the, I mean, on so those batches. So we took all those Whose we make of the It was sacrifice. I said, Do you remember we bought 30 chairs? After buying those 30 chairs, I, could not sleep. I was so excited. I was very much excited. Small things say thank you, Lord. I wake up when my wife was asleep. Mama, I go and look at those chairs. I say Sunday is coming. <laughs> I don't know if you are hearing me. Small things can bring big things. Can we just give thanks on small things? That's what Jesus did. He multiplies small bread. By thanking God. Listen to this. A prayer of thanksgiving. Is a prayer of multiplication. 
Small things can be made. I don't know if you are hearing me. You have got one car. You are about to have seven. I said you are about to have seven. You are about to have fourteen. You just need to sacrifice and thank God. You just need to sacrifice and thank God. You just need to sacrifice and thank God. It must not end in a testimony. Hey God, thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey God, thank you. It ends there. You got a job in the end. No. Sacrifice and see what God will be. You know, I've read that the sacrifices that we do is not for the people that are worshiping who are preaching the gospel. Only. Also, it's for the benefit of you. I, I, I will show you that scripture on Sunday. I will just show you in the book of Corinthians that the sacrifices you do is not only for the saints. It's only for the saints. It's also for you. It's also for you. To benefit. I just want to tell you that you are going to benefit. How many of you believe in benefit? Multiplication. Receive multiplication. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let me show you what Jonah prayed. Jonah 2. Jonah 2. Let's read 9 to 10. Araba leng 9 to 10. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Amen. I will pay what I have vowed. Amen. Salvation is of the Lord. Amen. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto the dry land. Jonah prayed a prayer of restoration. Jonah weila rapela tapelo ya uvutyo uvutisejwa. If you want to be restored. Awe na unyoko uvushejwa. Tell the Lord, I will sacrifice. I will pay what I vowed. And I will offer thanksgiving. After you pray that prayer, God commands the fish to vomit. If you can see, the Bible talks about the condition but when you look around this condition he said Lord I will offer thanksgiving what I vowed I will pay from today I will offer I will give thanks to you and God say, you fish. I want my son. And he was restored. Restoration is coming from thanksgiving. You know, because thanksgiving brings your identity to be known by you. You are able to identify yourself. You begin to understand that where you are is not where you belong. And you begin to thank God about the restoration that is coming. And now you are able to see yourself there. And that's where God will take you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Unless you, you know who you are. There's nothing that God will do for you. I'll say it again. Unless you find yourself. There's nothing that God will do for you. I met a lady from, from Ghana. And this lady was confidently understanding that when she met me, she would prophesy. And I, you know, I met her in Swaziland. That day, I will never forget that day. The moment she reached me when I'm praying with people, she was just thanking God that something is going to happen. When I say, I want people that God can open their eyes. Already she was here. When I lay hands on her, she began to prophesy. It's, it's a simple thing. 
I don't know if you, are, you understand I, what I'm I can saying. Say, Do you know why we can't give thanks? Yes. We have got many, many things in our minds. We are trying to solve our problems by ourselves. We forget that God is the one who placed there, us there where you want us. You see, God placed me here. I'm not intimidated. I don't know if you are hearing me. He placed me here. He knows the reasons why this is happening. I must give thanks to God. Do the same thing. You're not losing anything. You are placed by God where God wants. You can lose the worst and get the best. When people are laughing at you, and because you are standing your ground, your confidence of thanking him, your boldness of approaching his throne will bring mercy and grace for you. And that will work for you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you tell us what say, my friend? Your neighbor, my neighbor, your situation is not so big. Just begin to thank God about your situation and God will change it. If you people reach that level, you will stop complaining. You will stop worrying about money, worrying about what devil is doing. Now you will begin to hear God speaking with you. If you want to hear God speaking with you, reach a level where you say, thank you Lord. When you are clapped on the other side, you say, can you also clap on the other Because I thank God you are doing that. And when you reach that level, the this God of all grace will never leave you. I see someone here today who is listening to the sound of my voice. I say, like, like Jonah, God is restoring you. I say, God is restoring you. Stop complaining about your situation. Stop worrying about what you are facing. Because you cannot add even a hair by worries. That's what Jesus said. You cannot add anything to your body. You cannot change your stature. This is the time now that you thank God and thank God and thank God and thank God until he speaks until he changes your situation he is about to change your situation as he is about to change your situation are you ready to see your situation changing if you believe say I believe today my situation I don't want it to change. I want to thank God about it. And the Lord will change it. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I want to say congratulations.